Dogs have come a long way from just being man's best friend. Nowadays, dogs are holding jobs in places like schools, the police force, and even the courtroom. So we have dogs that will be like Goldie, where she's good with everybody from like small children all the way up to elderly. So she could be placed in like a therapy office um, in a school district where she would go to school every day and help the kids maybe read or, you know, if they're having a bad day, just be laying with them and let them pet them or, you know, therapy offices. Um, like courts buildings we had Baxter on a little earlier so he does like courts buildings and then we also train diabetic alert dogs um, which work for people that have type 1 diabetes and they alert to low and high blood sugars and um, then we also train some emotional support dogs so those are just dogs that um, somebody might have some physical needs or mental needs that a doctor would say you would benefit from an emotional support dog and those dogs are only allowed to um, live in the home with you, not go out to restaurants and those types of things. So th that training is a little bit shorter, but we just make sure all of their obedience is solid and everything for that. Baxter's a therapy dog and a canine advocate for the Cass County Courts. He started out as a seven week old puppy and is now about a year and a half and has completed his training and is now a certified therapy dog. So his, um, his main uh, purpose within the courts is to work with traumatized victims and witnesses uh, during interviews, during testimony, um, whenever they're in the court system. For Baxter, a job like his comes with great responsibility and should not be taken lightly. For the court system, there's been just so many studies of the benefits of having a canine advocate, therapy dog. Uh, they're an enormous calming effect. They also have the ability to make instant connections with people that may be scared of other people, uh, scared of the surroundings, scared of the situations. But um, with like Baxter, his ability to make an instant connection to somebody is the major benefit of having him there. And he has an enormous calming effect on people um, that may be traumatized or scared. But how do you take a regular dog and turn him into a service animal? We come in and all the dogs got to be fed and pottied in the morning. So we start out with that every morning. Get everybody cleaned up, treadmilled, um, their breakfast. And then we start right in training. So everything we do even in the morning when we get here is considered training. So no rushing out of your crates, no pulling to the potty yards. You got to wait for your breakfast. Um, so we do all of that. And then we do, we start scent work. Um, we get the babies out and we work, the babies as in puppies, um, we get them out and we start um, doing food protocol stuff with them and obedience stuff with them and then the older service dogs then we do obedience. Um, my assistant and I will take them into public, um, to restaurants, to the mall, to Walmart, all of the different types of retail stores to get them used to that. Um, we take them for dog or dog rides. We take them for car rides. Um, and so that's like a, a typical day, just working with the dogs all day. The basic one is socialization. He has to be good with all people, with all kids, uh, different environments. He can't be fearful of things within an environment. I can take him into any building, any situation. He's completely comfortable. Things you wouldn't think about like flooring surfaces and noises and that. Um, he really has to have the confidence level to be able to go into any of those situations and uh, be comfortable, um, which he is, and that all starts, like I said, as a, as a puppy, um, being in, introduced to loud noises, people in wheelchairs, people with walkers, um, so that he can, he can go into the courts and be confident enough not to be fearful, to interact with everybody. Uh, he especially loves kids. There's something that uh, he instantly identifies with kids. I think it may be the stature um, because they're more at eye level with him. But um, yeah, all those skills combined, uh, the environmental skills, the socialization skills are what makes um, for a good therapy dog. Especially for a service dog, proper training is important because you don't want you know, a mediocre dog being um, with a person that has a disability. Um, if you have a dog that hasn't completed all of its obedience training and then you're sending it out into the world to go to school with a child or go to work with an adult or something like that, um, 
and we haven't trained them correctly, they're gonna be dealing with a dog that doesn't have the training and then also dealing with whatever else they're dealing with in life. And so if you don't put the training efforts in, the dog's not gonna, you know, it's not gonna notice sit right when we stop or down when they're told to down. And so all of our dogs leaving here um, should be 100% trained. There shouldn't be going to be trained once you get placed into a home. It's, there's upkeep with training, but so that's important. Therapy dogs at work, it's, uh, it's an enormous benefit. Um, you, you have kids that won't talk, to, um, won't talk to people, but in a room setting with a dog, they'll tell them everything about themselves. Uh, during testimony, the kid may, a child may be very fearful of being in front of all those people. Having the dog by their side or at their feet gives them confidence. It, uh, it's a huge confidence boost for them to be able to reach down and pet the dog and interact with it and feel safe. So you want a dog that's friendly, that's well balanced, that has a good mind, that isn't scared of loud noises or new environments. A lot of times with service dogs, you know, they'll be flown into like an airplane or, you know, going on a train or a bus or riding in cars, going to busy places. They've got to be so solid that even if it's not something they did from months ago, they're able just to go right in there and still do their job. In recent years, people have tried to fake a service dog to get their pets into stores and restaurants, but to a certified trainer, this is no laughing matter. In today's world, it's, it's we're a world of convenience and you know you can buy anything on the internet. So what that has enabled people to do is decide that, oh, I love my dog, I want to take it to dinner with me, so let me get on you know whatever website they find and they'll buy a service dog vest. So you've got a person that has a disability and they're at the grocery store, let's say they have epilepsy, and that dog is supposed to be paying attention to that person um, to alert them before they'll have a seizure. So if they're doing their own business, going about the dog is paying attention, if you are a person that in my world is you're selfish and you decide just because you love your dog, you can slap a vest on it and take it to the grocery store with you or take it to dinner and it doesn't have the proper training, um, you are putting that service dog in jeopardy and that person in danger if your dog lunges at that dog or you know starts barking at that dog you're going to be distracting and god forbid if your dog isn't trained and it's dog reactive and it attacks that service dog you you can ruin that person's dog for the rest of its life with one one attack or you know something like that at the store so it's really yeah it's really it's it's i don't know it's really upsetting to us here that people are doing that because there's people out there that really need service dogs. And like I said, I just feel like it's selfish. I mean, that's not the nicest word, but I feel like with you're in those situations and you don't have a disability, I mean, it's a federal law that if you impersonate a service dog, you can be fined and even imprisoned. So I don't think people realize that. You know, they're just like, oh, I love my dog. I want to take it to dinner. Well, guess what? I love my dog too, but they don't get to come to dinner with me. So I just think it's important that people just, I don't think they understand like the big picture of it. They're just saying, this is what I want to do and this is what I'm going to do because I can do it. And it's just not right. Christina had one thing to say to those people. Stop, stop faking, stop being selfish and think of other people. Don't, you're just, you're ruining it for the people. And what is gonna happen really is they're gonna ruin it for the people that truly need service dogs. The business owners already are having a hard time with people bringing in fake service dogs and not knowing you know, what their rights are and what they can say and what they can't say. And so they're going to ruin it for the people that truly need a service dog and truly need that dog to work for them. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, um, he's with me. Uh, he goes to work with me, he's at home with me. Um, it's, it's an enormous bond that you have with the dog. I mean, everybody feels like they bond with their dogs, but uh, this is kind of on a next level. And uh, something I got to experience with my first patrol narcotics dog was uh, that kind of bond. And um, to me, it's, it's normal everyday life to just have him you know, around all the time with me. I went on vacation and it was very odd not to, he didn't get to go with and it was, uh, it was odd that he wasn't there with me. 
<laughs> I have wanted to train dogs since as far as I can remember. My mom told me when I was like two and three years old I would be having our family dog and then training it. Something I've wanted to do my whole entire life. So I love it. Um, I've always wanted to, when I was little I thought I wanted to train CNI dogs because that's what I knew about. So I'm um, just going forward. Um, I just learned different training methods and just different types of service dogs. And I feel like my heart is in the service dogs that we're training now. Um, it's just what I live to do. It's what I'm here to do. <laughs>